Welcome to the STARS program, seniors taking active roles in society. And now, here's your host, Anita Finley. So, anyway, so you heard this great commercial, and I have the, the guy that we've been talking to right here in the studio, and it is Anthony Culp. Good morning, Anthony. Good morning. Oh, you know, it's funny. He and I were talking about traffic and on. Yes, the season's here, but that's good for your business, actually. Absolutely. You know, you're going to... I was seeing people, it's funny, I live in a condo building, and I'm seeing all these strange faces, and I see the realtors coming in, you know, and they're, they're showing people everything. But So I guess my question is, when a snowbird comes down, are they thinking about, but it gets cold anyway up north, are they thinking about buying real estate here as a temporary, or are they going to move here? What is your typical person? When a snowbird comes down and they're staying for a month, maybe two months, um, They'll take a couple of years to go out and look around, so you really have to stay in touch with them. Uh, sometimes it's they're not just ready to retire yet, or they're looking for a future primary that they're going to use three months out of the year. Uh, so, And you also have to figure out what their needs are going to be. Most people don't even know what their needs are going to be in three years or five years. And uh, it's good to share stories and examples from other people. Uh, that were in the same set, uh, situation. And also, depending, do they live in a city? Do they live in a rural area? It makes a big difference. Some people won't put up with traffic like uh, we had this morning. <laughs> By the way, I-95 is closed from Hillsborough. Yeah, and my rural tracks are closed, too, so it's okay. But, um, you know, but, I, uh, but I'm very, I'm in admiration of you because... The one thing that you do is, and I think it's so important, you smile a lot. <laughs> and that makes people feel good, you know. And, and there are a lot of real estate agents out there. But I have to tell you, I, I sold real estate in 1970. Let's see, and, then, and up until 1990, 1979. Uh, and there were a lot of real estate agents at the time. I worked for a company called Arvida. But I was right up there at the top. But I would say this, I worked seven days a week early in the morning till midnight sometimes, whatever it took, and I know that's why I admire you. You do the same thing. Yeah, I've been doing this almost 20 years, but I have to say there are times you have to turn that phone off. Um, usually when I get home, somewhere between 6 and 8 o'clock, I'll turn the phone off. Most likely I can't help you between 6 and 8 o'clock. Uh, and also when people call at that time, they're looking to leave a quick message. And, uh, you know, you get into work first thing in the morning, you listen to the message, hopefully they left a clear message, and you uh, get back to them with their answer. Of course, real estate is different today because you have so much online that you can work with. But on the other hand, before people required a, an agent to give them all the information, now you probably have people who come to you and they know everything they think, right? Absolutely. And the Internet is a great tool. You can't trust all the information you see. There's one large uh, website that begins with a Z that will give you an estimate of what a property's worth, but all they're doing is taking in averages, and they're averaging apples to oranges, which you can't do. There could be, especially in South Florida, you could have one block where there's million dollar homes and three blocks away, their homes are running for 300,000. So uh, a $300,000 home isn't going to be a million dollar home and a million dollar home isn't going to be a $300,000 home. So you really need the advice of a realtor to, you know, say, hey, I'm interested in this house. I've looked it up online. I'm a little bit confused. And uh, can you help me out with this? And I'll tell you, nine out of 10 calls don't pan out. You give the people the information and you never hear from them again. Um Anthony Culp is my guest, and he actually, uh, it's called the K Company Realty, LLC, and he's located um, in Broward County, but he sells in Miami-Dade, he sells in Palm Beach County, and the one thing that I, I really resented something, and I, I want to tell you, because I don't think you feel that way, when I first got in the real estate business, the old timers used to say, well, buyers are liars, and I hated that, because that's not really true. They just are confused. They don't know what they're doing, but I thought that was pretty crude. You've probably heard that too. Well, That's not right. Well, and it's also a business with a lot of competition. And uh, you have to hold on to your buyers. You have to stay in contact with them. And, uh, you know, there were days where I would just sit there for four hours and just call people over and over and over again and send emails. Typically, it would be Saturday morning when I hoped that they were home. 
Uh, I never wanted to call during dinner or while they were at work. And, uh, you know, just have a quick conversation. How are you? Try to keep, you know, know something that's going on in their life. Uh, if they said, oh, I'm going to retire in three years, you know, and that three-year point comes, ask them, are you ready to retire? How's it going? Has, th- has anything changed? Has any of your kids moved back into the house? Uh, oh, that's a whole new thing, right. <laughs> you know, Will they be coming with right, you? Right. But Anthony, I tell you, even as, and I have a broker's license, which I don't use, I just have it, you know, maybe for some time for certain friends or something. But if I were really looking seriously for something, I would definitely call you to help me because you are on MLS, you have all the experience, you know the area. So I, I really warn people in a sense, please, you're going to waste your own time, you're going to waste Anthony's time. What you need to do is to go to someone like him. He's going to be honest with you. He understands the uh, all the ins and outs, and you're not really paying the commission anyway if you're a buyer. Now, if you're a seller, let me also tell you, you don't want to sit there and have people come to your house with this for sale by owner. No way you will be crazy. Let someone else do it. It's their business. You'll be so happy. It'll be a beautiful closing. And, you know, it's a profession. The the biggest mistake sellers make is, one, they think it's easy. Uh, two, they give away information that they shouldn't be giving away. And three, they're distracting to buyers. So somebody will be trying to sell their house themselves, and someone will come in. I'll come in. I do it when the owner's there. And I say, oh, where are you going? Oh, you're going to be moving in with your daughter. How wonderful. Right away, I know they don't need the money. <laughs> uh, the other thing, when a buyer comes in, they're pointing out crown molding, or I just did this, I just did that, and look at this. Buyers get very confused. They want to picture themselves living there, and when, then when they express interest, then you say, oh, by the way, I just redid the bathroom, and I did, you know, I put in crown molding. And isn't it better though that when even when it's your listing, that the owners aren't there when when you absolutely. take people? Tell absolutely, tell us about but they that. want to be helpful. And they want to tell them about all of the times they had and their kids. And, you know, here's where little Susan split her head open. And here's where Tommy, uh, you know, we used to mark his forehead on the door jam. And, you know, buyers really don't want to hear that. They want a picture living there. And, um, you know, it's great and they want to be helpful, but it, it, they're very distracting. Let's talk about furnished and unfurnished. Mm-hmm. Now, the, a lot of your properties, are they, how are they? Well, it's about 50-50, and it's all, you know, the seller's needs. Not every seller can move out and move on to their next property. Uh, We try to go through when it's furnished and remove all personal items, you know, pictures, stuff like that. We don't want people to stop and look at pictures. We want them to feel the space, you know, (laughs) and that's what we want to point out and say, oh, uh, you know, what would you do if you lived here? And, um, And then if it's unfurnished, if it's unfurnished, it has to be clean. Clean the windows, clean the bathrooms. If somebody walks in and they're keeping their arms very close to their body, they're not comfortable there. Most likely they're not going to buy that house. Oh, I never heard that before. There's a whole psychology to oh, watch right? people when they're in the home. If somebody <laughs> walks in a home and they're touching their head, it means they're, they're not really comfortable with it. They're not really sure. But if somebody touches their abdomen, if they rub their stomach... <laughs> They're like a puppy, I rub their stomach, they're happy. <laughs> and, you know, and, they'll and is it stand true? There. You find that to be true? Oh, absolutely. If you have a, some, I've been doing this a long time, and sometimes I take it for granted how easy it is for me. But every once in a while, I'll get that client, and I just won't get any response from them. So I'll have to start to pay attention to really their body language and what's going on and you know, how long do they want to stay there. And just so it's a psychology. I didn't know that. Absolutely. You want to see if people are picturing themselves living there. And that's why you have to kind of have a blank slate when you're selling your home. And if it's furnished, take down all those amazing gifts from all over where you traveled and, you know, just... uh, It's called staging, right? Exactly. Make it look like a furniture showroom. Oh, that's great. You know, a couple pieces on the table, clear your kitchen countertops, and clean, clean, clean. Clean cells. Yeah, clean cells. Okay, so now I guess my next question is when someone says, well, I'm not sure if I want to be on a golf course or on the ocean, so you have to do, take them to both places, and then how do you get them to make the decision? Well, I don't like to show any more than six units at a time. 
If you show more than six, people get very It's even a lot. It is a lot. But in most cases, people don't have a lot of time to go out and look. They're either working or they're only here for a few days. So I would spend probably one day looking at ocean, up at the ocean, and let them know the pros and cons. And, and it, is this where you're going to spend your time? If this is where you're going to spend your time, then absolutely. Uh, but if you're more of a nester and you want a larger place for the same money or less, then let's go inland a little bit. And if you want a nice view, then living on a golf course is great. Now, if you're living on a golf course and you don't play golf, then you don't want to live in a community where you have to pay fees uh, for something you're never going to use. Smart, because you see, that's why a realtor like you, and, and this is Anthony Culp, it's K-U-L-P, and he's your number one realtor in South Florida, and we're so happy that he's joining us. And, going to give you his phone number so get your pencils out it's 954-815-9048 again it's 954-815-9048 and I will give you his um his website but I don't have it here hmm. why don't you give me your website it's realestatesofl.com okay real estate okay I'm gonna write that down for me so why don't you do that one more time it's real estate S-O-F-L dot com. Okay, right. And when when someone comes in, so you have to go on the on the computer yourself to try to find what's going on because sometimes things are sold too and you don't want to show them something or if there's a contract Correct. and that's how you can find out. Correct. Uh, many times when they go online, it'll show up that it's active, but it's actually under contract. And people will say, well, I want to see it anyway. Well, most likely it's going to go to go it's going to settle and you're kind of wasting your time looking at a property that you won't even have a chance and to I buy. didn't know they even want it. once it's under contract does the other realtor want to show it well no usually uh, other realtors will discourage their buyers yeah. from looking yeah um, because there's so many properties to look at depending right. in what market and yeah it's nice when somebody comes to me and say I only want a house or a condominium in this area <laughs> well did they ask you where do you live <laughs> oh, absolutely. And I love to sell where I live, well, and right, I sell a lot of property. Yeah. I happen to live in Palmer, which is right. one of the largest green spaces in uh, Broward County. It's three golf courses, two clubhouses, and it's at the intersection of Atlantic and Powerline. It's a beautiful place. It's well landscaped with mature trees. Uh, everything just about looks out over a golf course or an open area. And it's just a nice place to live. There's a community um, center there for the city of Pompano, a community playground with an outside working area, uh, workout area, tennis courts, uh, volleyball, and it's just a great place to live. It really is, and, and, and Anthony and I was talking about this years ago. I remember that it was famous, more famous, because Elizabeth Taylor used to go there for the spa. That was the big thing, because... It, there weren't too many Palm Airs around. Maybe now they have a lot more uh, big communities, but at the time, that was rare. It was, and I met the gentleman who actually designed the spa, and he lives in Palm Air, and he came to me. He was looking for a piece of property, and we started to talk, and he said, you know, I was here when this was a pineapple field. <laughs> Bus. And he said when the builders decide to build it, and it was in the mid-60s when they had this brainstorm, and the, uh, everyone said to him, who's going to come all the way out here? No one's going to come all the way out here. So they, they made it as a destination area. Oh. And they had five golf courses and two clubhouses and a big spa and tennis and a pool. And there wasn't much surrounding it at the time. And then they also had a clubhouse up on the beach. So if you wanted to go to the beach, you could drive up to the beach, park at the clubhouse, and go on the beach and use the facilities that are there. Unfortunately, that is no longer there. They had sold the property off. But that was very smart of them. Wow, that really, see, that's it when I was saying. People didn't know if they wanted to be on the ocean or they wanted to be inland, but that way they got both. But so you live there and you're very happy there. And um, is this a family place? Well, it's not a 55 plus communities. It's uh, the majority are condominiums in uh, high rise buildings. And uh, young families will come there. They usually stay two or three years until they can put the money away to buy a home with a yard and, you know, maybe their own pool. 
but it is a safe, clean place to live. And not to say that there aren't other safe, clean places to live in Broward County, but it's uh, probably one of the nicest, largest communities uh, that close to the beach. It's less than six miles to the beach, right down Atlantic Boulevard, to Pompano Beach, which is a beautiful beach that they've just redone. It's a large beach. Uh, they just put a restaurant right up on the beach. It has bathrooms and concession stands, and they're, the pier, uh, they're rebuilding, and it should be done in the fall of 2019. So, and they're... <coughs> And if you like the casino, you have one very close to you. We have a casino right there, and there's rumors that they're going to put in a hotel and convention center. Is that right? It's they're, called the Isle. It's the Isle Casino. It's on a very large piece of property. And the plan, from what I hear, is convention center hotel, and then they will be putting in shopping, and then the last phase will be high-end condominiums. <laughs> so if you're living in Palm Air, as much as I would love to sell your house, it probably wouldn't be the best time to move. Yeah, no, but, uh, but you know, this, I think that the market is, is still very good. People, you know, are very fortunate. People that paid, I don't know what they paid many, many years ago, mm -hmm. but now everything is doubled and tripled. But you know what's on there. And so if you want Palmer, Anthony Culp is your man. However, I would say no matter where you want to go. You know, you want to call Anthony because he's experienced enough. And... And you have, um, you know, Fort Lauderdale is a very beautiful area. So you're between Fort Lauderdale and Boca, in a sense. Right. I uh, cover from Southern Palm all the way into Northern Dade. Going into Miami, it's a little bit more difficult. It's not my area of expertise. Well, Aventura, though, is, is oh, pretty good for you. Oh, absolutely. Aventura. Uh, along the coast, uh, Hollywood, uh, really where somebody needs to go. Showing houses is the easy part. Anybody can open a door and walk through and say, oh, look how lovely this is. The part is getting you to walk away with set from settlement with the keys in your hand. I love you say this, and I have to <laughs> tell you, we used to have, and I don't know if you still do, I used to have a saying that said, closings don't. <laughs> <laughs> so many times we get everything done, we get there, and there was something that didn't get done, or the buyer or the seller. Right. Is that still happening with closing? All you have time. to really be very careful, don't All you? All the time. All uh, the time. Dining room chandeliers. <laughs> you don't know how many times we do a walkthrough and they say, where's the chandelier? The chandelier's missing. And all of a sudden, before settlement, you know, what do you want to do about this? And, uh, oh, that's or appliances interesting. are missing or it wasn't cleaned out. Or a worst case scenario, the people are still in the property. And oh, so uh, you, that's right. So there's, it's, so it isn't just making the buyer or the seller happy that you have a contract it's fulfilling the contract to the right. last signature right and right. and you give them the keys right you have a, a few phases you have negotiations to reach an agreement then you have financing if people are doing financing then you have to deal with the condominium and the management companies and the condominium documents uh, and then getting to settlement make when there is financing they estimate to be almost 80 people involved with any transaction. So if one person doesn't do their job, it could hold up a settlement. So you have to stay on top. Is this happening? Is that happening? Uh, are these things being done on time? And you have to have good people around you, a good title agency or an attorney that you work with, uh, insurance companies, because most people aren't from here. They don't deal with insurance companies. They don't deal with title companies. And, uh, you know, and you want to recommend somebody who will do the job and do the job right. I'm glad you brought that up because title is so important when you want to go sell something, for heaven's sakes, you know. But it's really the realtor who makes sure and you cross your T's, dot your I's, and people don't understand that. So do you help them get a mortgage? I put them in that? touch with people who I work with on a regular basis uh, in order for them to get a mortgage. Uh, occasionally somebody will live up north and they'll say oh my nephew does mortgages he's gonna help me get a mortgage in Florida well his company may not write mortgages in Florida or not have any uh, access to information here and it makes it very difficult and I encourage people to use a local someone local who does mortgages and knows the market and uh, you know will be able to see the problems before uh, you know they become problems 
The other thing, and I know that you're uh, knowing you enough, I would say that inspections are very important because you, as experienced as you are, you can't see every little thing in the roof right. or what things in. And those inspections really tell a lot, right? Because <coughs> the, the the buyer, I mean, the, the buyer has to depend on you, the seller. And if you're listing a, a home, you have to know all these things. I have a long history with construction. I've been in the housing business for almost 40 years. Wow. And I can walk through a condominium and I can see the nightmares. And there's a lot of flipping going on right now. And some Tell of the people, people what that means. Uh, a flip is when somebody buys a place for a very low price, maybe foreclosure or short sale, and the place is just absolutely disgusting and a mess. And they come in and they put it all back together and put in new cabinets and flooring and new roof and uh, just make it a nice, clean place to live. Now you have good flippers who have been out doing it for a long time and you walk in and you can see it. You can see that they really put the place back together very nicely. And then you have others that just come in and I cringe to think what's behind the walls. Mm -hmm. What's the wiring like? What's the plumbing like? Did they get permits? Wow. So yeah, so you and you want to you protect whomever you're working with and I guess and that's the real key to an experienced real estate person and I think we touched on the beginning. It seems like everybody has a real estate license. <laughs> I mean, you know, they were they were all sorts of things. They were fitness instructors, they were something else and uh and then they decided to go into real estate. It looks so easy. Sure, you can make five thousand dollars and it's just like this right after six months or a year. Uh, so I I really applaud you to stay in this over 30 years. Well, I've been in housing for housing. almost 40 years. 40. I've been a, a realtor, realtor for, broker yeah. for 20, 20 years. years. So so when you think about that, you wouldn't stay in this if yeah. you didn't think this was the right thing. Well, for I went through the housing crash, and it was hard. And I had to work seven days a week, eight hours a day. I did short sales when no one else wanted to do short sales because they were so difficult. Tell and, people what a short sale is. Well, the short sale, I borrowed $200,000 from you to buy my house. And I can no longer afford the payments for my house. So I want to sell it, but the house is only worth $150,000. <laughs> so I come to you and I say, I owe you $200,000, but my house is only worth one hundred and fifty. dollars If I sell it for one hundred and fifty, dollars will you take the $150,000 and we can work out a deal with the remainder whether you let me off with it all together or I pay you over a period of time. Oh, so that was tough. Oh, that was tough. Oh, are you still you're having short sales now? Very rarely. Short sales and foreclosures are almost a thing of the past. Property values are back up. Um, you know, banks that sometimes a foreclosure would sit on the market forever. If one does come on the market, it typically sells pretty fast. Wow. So Anthony Culp, I know I told you that uh, he's the one you want to call. You can see he's so experienced in so many things. And we call him the number one realtor in South Florida. He does this full time. This is what he's been done. He's been doing for a long time. He covers Broward, North Dade, Palm Beach County. Um, and, you know, if it's a sale, it's a rental. Or you have down property management, too. So you would help someone do that? Right. We... We'll find age, uh, uh, renters for people, uh, and my, the company, K Company Realty, we manage your property. So many people have a rental property here that may live in Pennsylvania, and they can't be here to fix the dishwasher or collect the rent and so on. So we have an agent in the office who, uh, that's pretty much all he does is work with tenants. Wow. Well, it's wonderful that you're here. You, you, your saying is buy smart, sell smart, and live well. Yes. And so, you know, um, it's the holidays, and I know that you're going to be loaded with people coming down here. And uh, I know sometimes people just want to see homes, but uh, you are experienced enough to know the people who are really are serious. You have to ask questions. You have to keep asking questions, as many questions as you can. Yeah, questions, right. You know, are you serious now? <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking about, I'm going to come back next year, right? And I'm going to look at something, but... But, uh, but that doesn't always happen. Well, you know, uh, Anthony, it's, uh, it is really a pleasure because I have, as I said, I was in the business long enough to know why people are successful. And, and you are very, you know, gregarious. You're cer certainly 
very intense on what you're going to have, and I can see that you would never sell someone something that wasn't right, or if you take a listing, you're going to be on it. In fact, in the ad you're promoting in Boomer Times, people can go uh, and see it. You have two homes that you are, you know, featuring, and so it's it's one thing to take a listing, but you've got to work that listing. You've got you to figure it out, to. don't you? You have to. <laughs> we had touched on about realtors who had just got their license, and someone came to me yesterday and said, oh, I went to my uh, UPS store, or similar to a UPS store, and the guy there just got his real estate license, and he was asking me what I'm planning on doing. Oh, yeah, right. I said, well, wh how does he expect to go show property if he's <laughs> yeah, working, working nine right. That's what they do. What or they list do. property. Does he tell you when he takes your <laughs> listing? Right. Oh, I work at the mailboxes store. And so. Anthony, it's always a pleasure to have you here. Again, his phone number is 954-815-9048. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure.